Okay, so we're looking at a very basic version of the same cafe here, and you'll notice I've, I've got the original wall types in, so I've got basically um, red brick on one side and the kind of mortar on the other side. What I want to be able to do in a moment is change these wall types to suit what I want. One thing I'm going to check before I do that, just to make life easier for myself, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to have a look at the units we're using. And inside project units, I'm going to make sure this time I'm using millimeters. Now we were, when we drew the big outside thing, we were working in meters. Okay, but if I work in millimeters now, it'll make a little bit more sense when I start editing this wall thickness. So I've checked that, that's all good. I'm going to click on one of my walls. Now at the moment, this is telling me that I've, I'm using a double wall. It's a double brick and it's 270 mil thick. And this is a standard wall that comes with Revit. What I want to do is make my own version of this and slightly change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Edit Type. And in here it shows me a picture, first of all. So I've got Preview switched on over here. It shows me a picture of that wall through a sort of um, a cross-section view of it. Now we can actually see that on the plan itself if we switch views. Um, and I'll show you that afterwards. But basically what I want to do is I want to make a duplicate of this and call it something different. So now, you know, calling it brick exterior and paint interior is just telling me exactly what, what I'm going to be looking at. So that's what I want to do with it. I want to have the bricks on the outside and I want to be able to paint on the inside of these walls. So I'm going to say OK to that. That's given me a new name. So this is, in essence, an, is a new type of wall now. But I want to look at the structure of the wall in more detail. So if I click Edit up here, now you can see this is why I changed from meters to millimeters, so that the size that was shown in this thickness was a little bit easier to understand. If we left it in meters, these would have sort of said 0 0.01 and things like that. So it's harder to edit. But ultimately, if I explain this, we've got the exterior side here down to the interior side here. So as we look through the brick from top to bottom, it's like the picture on the left from top to bottom. And what we want to do is be able to change or add to that structure so that we can put a paint layer in as well. So I want a paint layer at the bottom here, which is the interior side. So I'm going to click Insert. And you'll see that it put this thing in called Structure. And it says the material is by category. It means it hasn't been assigned anything yet. I'm going to click the Down button until that goes down. So I've now got a sixth layer. I've added to the five that were there with a new one. And this one now is right at this end, close to the interior. It's the one that's going to be on the inside. I don't want it to be a structural thing. So I'm going to change that to what's called Finish 2. OK, and the category for Finish 2, when I open it up, I'm just going to find a paint. So there's one here that opens up straight away called Parking Stripe. Now, Parking Stripe is a very peculiar name for it. But basically, that paint comes as part of Revit. And I, I could make my own, which we're going to do afterwards. But I'm going to just use that one for now, just so it's the right type of material. So I'm going to click on there and click OK. You'll see it's changed the parking stripe here. If I had one called red paint or blue paint, it would have changed it to that if I picked them. But parking stripe's fine. But what I'd need to do is to give it a thickness. And I'm actually, I don't want to make my wall any thicker. So I'm going to take this um, air barrier and I'm going to make that 40 instead of 50. And I'm going to take my paint layer and I'm going to make it 10. Now, in reality, you're not going to have 10 millimeters worth of paint on there but for our ex for our interior design um, that's fine so I've got brick on the outside and I've got paint which is called parking stripe on the inside now I could even change if I wanted to what this brick layer looked like if I went in the drop down here I could again go into the material browser and I could choose a completely different sort of outside finish and there's lots to choose from but I'm not going to at the moment I'm just gonna say happy with what I've got here and I'm gonna say okay and I'm going to say OK again. And now what I can do is I can change. So you can see this wall has already changed now. If I click back on it, it's using my new one, this one called Brick Interior, Exterior, Paint Interior. I can click and do the same thing now and choose for these other walls the same type. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to change all of my walls to a slightly different wall to the one that I've just created. And the reason I've done this is so that in a moment I can add my own colors to them. Now there's only one wall that might be a problem. Some of these internal ones, I might actually want to make another type again. And I might want to have two surface finishes on them. Um, 
I'll stick with the exterior ones just for now so I know that I've done them all. So I should now, if I spin my thing around, should find that all of those are brick on the outside, but they're painted yellow, they're painted parking stripe on the inside. Now, apart from these walls here, which are obviously all interior. So what I want to do now is make a second wall type, which has got paint on both sides. And that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to select my wall. Again, it says double brick. So I'm doing the same process all over again. I'm going to edit the type and I'm going to duplicate. So I might just call this one interior paint wall. Say okay. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into the edit mode. This time I want to add um, two finish layers, or I can even change this finish layer and make this a finish two, and make this a f and add a new one in, and drag that one down to the bottom, and make this one finish two as well, and then I change the category. So I don't want it to be a masonry one on the outside now. I want it to be. I'm going to go for one of my paint ones again, so I'll use the same yellow one for the time being, parking stripe. And the same thing down here, parking stripe. Okay, now strictly speaking, uh, I don't want to have a finished layer which is going to be as big as this. But for the time being, for what I'm doing for this purpose, it's fine. Okay, if it was a real um, thing, if we were actually building the complete building, we'd have to take a bit more time with this and we would actually have to make sure that we had um, adequate wall structure in there to keep the thing together. But for an interior wall uh, at the moment, this this will do fine for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say OK again. Now, I should find that if I spin my thing around, there we go, I've got a yellow wall on both sides and I just want to change these other interior interior walls to the same one so I'm going to go for the same thing again what did I call it I called it interior paint wall now I'm looking at it's a bit off the screen for you but I've got one um, it's showing at the bottom here interior paint wall and finally do the same thing on this one. So I should find now that all of those walls on the inside are able to take paint. Okay, before I can actually do that, I have to create some paint though. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into this, I'm still in my Manage tab, and I'm gonna click on the Materials Browser. And in my Materials Browser, I'm gonna basically take this one that already exists called Parking Stripe, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna hit Duplicate. Now I'm going to give it a name, so as you can tell from the name I'm going to make this into a blue paint, I'm going to apply the name, and then I'm going to edit it. Now at the moment you can see it's yellow, it's yellow, I haven't changed it to blue, I haven't done anything with it yet apart from give it a name. I'm going to click onto appearance, now that what the most important thing to remember is on the appearance tab for blue paint, there's up here where it says um, asset sharing it says that this asset is shared with one other material basically it's sharing all its properties with the one called parking stripe if I leave this set as linked to that parking stripe any changes I make to my paint blue will also happen in my parking stripe and I don't want that to happen so I don't want this number one up here to get rid of it I'm going to come over to here to the right hand side where it says duplicates and I'm going to turn the duplication off so it's updated and now you can see it says zero and I'm actually going to apply that before I do anything else with it so it's not linked to any other things it's an entity on its own now I'm going to give it a new name now most of the stuff on here like the keywords and all this kind of stuff I can change that if I choose to to make it more accurate for when I'm doing searches but for the time being all I'm going to actually do is change the color so I'm going to click on the color I'm going to go into my Pantone library and in my Pantone library, I'm going to go for some sort of blue color. So that one will do, number 299, and I'm going to say OK. And now, one thing that might be worth remembering is these RGB colors uh, are the actual colors of that paint that I've selected. So if I wanted to remember them, I could write down 0, 163, and 221. And that is 
that blue that I've chosen. It's a very specific color. I'm going to click OK. You can see it's changed here, and it's also changed in this um, panel over on the left. If I go back to my graphics, my graphics has not necessarily changed it. Now, this is only to do with shading, but I've found that it's worth changing it here as well. I'm going to apply what I've done so far. I'm going to keep clicking Apply just to make sure it happens. And I'm going to go into this one here. Now, if I remembered my numbers, I don't have to search for it again. I can type my numbers in. So my second number was 163. And the final number there was 221. And that's remembered the color. Click OK. So now, if I click Apply, that's saved. I've got a blue paint. I'm going to go through that process one more time just to make sure that um, you understand how it works. I'm going to do a bit quicker this time, but I'm going to go back to my parking stripe. I'm going to duplicate parking stripe. I'm going to give her a new name. Okay, paint purple, and I'm going to apply that as the name. And then I'm going to go into my appearance panel, and I'm going to turn off. It's saying it's linked to two things now, both of those. I'm going to click them off so it's not linked to anything. I'm going to change the name here. And then I'm going to go down to the actual color, and I'm going to find myself a purple that I like the look of. I'm going to go for maybe this one here. It's quite nice and bright. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to make a note of my numbers because I'm going to use them in a minute. So I've got 155, 109, and 198. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to make sure I've applied that. I'm going to switch to the graphics view. And I'm going to do the same thing in here. I'm going to change my numbers to 155, 109, 198. So it's got the same color. Okay, I'm going to apply all that and I'm going to say OK. So basically, now I've created two new paints. So they're, they're the, the correct material type. The material type is paint and I've selected the colors for them. So what I can do is I can go into my Modify tab, and under there, there's a little one here which is actually called Paint. So if I click on Paint, it opens up this big browser window. Now you can't see everything on yours, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search by name, because I know I called them Paint. There's the two that I've made. They've come up in the search. If I click on the blue one, when I go over to the wall, you can see that this cursor changes to a different shape, I click on it, it goes blue. If I come back to the purple one, come to this wall, it goes purple. Now all I need to do is basically move around, decide which walls I want to be purple and which walls I want to be blue. Okay, that was all one big wall. Um, maybe I wanted that one to be a blue wall instead, so I'll choose blue on there. And I can click on my walls and I can change my colors.